This is an experiment to measure the rigidity modulus of a wire. Usually, this experiment is done in colleges where the wire is hung from the roof of the room and you put a very large weight, twist the wire and measure the period of oscillation. Same experiment is done here on a tabletop model. You consider a wire of length L and radius A clamped at one end at the top and attached to a circular disc of mass M and radius R at the other end. If you twist the disc through an angle theta, a couple acts on the wire and this is given by tau is pi into rigidity modulus into the radius of the wire power 4 by twice the length of the wire into the angle theta. The couple is proportional to the angle of twist. If you now let go the disc, the disc performs torsional oscillations with a frequency f given by f is 1 by 2 pi into pi n a to the power of 4 by 2 l into i, i is in the denominator power half where i is the moment of inertia of the disc which is m into r square by 2 for a circular disc. The frequency of torsional oscillation of the wire is inversely proportional to the square root of the length. We verify this and find the rigidity modulus of the material of the wire using the setup shown here. There is a brass wire, that is the wire here. It is fixed at the two ends. It is fixed here by this clamp and fixed at the bottom. There are two movable clamps. These are the two movable clamps. To move them, you have to release a screw at the back and then release the set screws here and then move the clamps up or down. This wire has a brass disc which is soldered at the center of the wire and this disc has two prongs to which you attach two magnets. Those are the magnets. There are two coils here and here which are iron cord they are connected in series and if an AC current passes through the coils, this magnet will be pushed back, this magnet will be pushed back, this magnet will be pushed forward and therefore the wire will be twisted and it will execute torsional oscillations. This magnet will be pushed back, this magnet will be pushed forward and the wire will execute torsional oscillations. (coughs) 
you can go back. These clams are moved to a distance L from the center of the brass disc and they are fixed. Fixed means you must clamp the screw and you must clamp at the back. So both the clamps are moved fixed at equal distances from the center. So the couple, if you twist the wire, couple per unit twist, for a twist theta, now twice the couple due to each section of the wire. This length of the wire will exert a couple, this length of the wire will exert a couple, so the total couple is twice the couple due to one segment of the wire. So when a current passes through the two coils, a torque will be exerted on the wire and the wire will set into oscillations. I change the frequency, find out when the amplitude is a maximum. You can see that now, frequency is 32 hertz. They are oscillating with a Frequen the frequency is 92 hertz. They are oscillating with a very small amplitude. I bring the frequency down. You focus on this. I bring the frequency down. Then you see they start oscillating. And at this frequency, they start oscillating with the maximum amplitude. So find the frequency at which you get maximum amplitude, not that frequency. Then move the clamps. This clamp two centimeters down this clamp two centimeters up so that you change the length by two centimeters. Tighten the two screws, tighten the screws at the back. Again adjust the frequency so that you get maximum amplitude. So you do this. We have a signal generator which is connected to, this is the output of the signal generator. It is connected to the input of the power amplifier. The two coils are connected to the output of the power amplifier. So you move the clamps by two centimeters, find the frequency at which you get the maximum amplitude. So this gives a set of data. The density of brass 8500 kilogram per meter cube. The diameter of the brass wire is 1.5 millimeters. It's written in meters. The moment of inertia of this disk is obtained from the mass of the disk and the radius of the disk. It is a mass square by 2. It is 6.258 e power minus 6. The mass of each magnet is given on the label here, 2 grams. Distance between the magnets here, that distance 
seven centimeters. So moment of inertia of each magnet is two mass into d by two whole square. The two magnets two into mass into d by two whole square. So total moment of inertia is this. Then there is a length L between from the center to the clamp. That is the length. The frequency at which you get maximum oscillation is this. There is the reciprocal of the length in meters, and this is square of the frequency. And you change the length from 20 centimeters. To five centimeters, the frequency increases. We plot a graph between the square of the frequency and one by l in meter inverse of a meter. You fit it to a straight line, find the slope, 91.4 meter per second square. Then the rigidity modulus is four pi times total moment of inertia divided by the radius of the wire, which is half the diameter, power four into the slope, and this comes out to be four point not five ten to the power of ten. Pascals, or 40.5 gigapascals. 